Welcome back everyone, this is Kevin from CXC Tutor. In this video lecture, we will be continuing our pre-calculus course and the topic we are going to cover today would be the graphs of basic functions. I may split this particular topic into two or three videos, but hopefully by the end of it you should be able to explain what is meant to graph a function and know how to sketch various parent functions. I also want to cover after this section how to find the domain and range of a function from its graph and also algebraically. All right, let us begin. What does it mean to graph a function? If f is a function with domain a, then the graph of f is the set of ordered pairs x and fx such that x is the element of a the domain. In other words, the graph of f is a set of all points x and y such that y is equal to fx. Here are some of the functions you will encounter in this course. The first one is called the linear function which takes the form fx is equal to mx plus c. We have the power function. We have the root function, exponential, reciprocal, and also absolute value function. We'll cover each of these individually, and we'll also make some extra notes based on some of their properties. So the first one is linear function. A function f in the form of fx equals mx plus c is called a linear function because its graph is the graph of the equation y equals mx plus c, which represents a straight line with slope or gradient m and the y-intercept is the value of c. Now you should pay close attention to the equation for the gradient. The equation is as follows, m is equal to y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. So please pay special attention to this equation. So on this slide, we have two simple linear functions. The first one is the simplest one of all, and that would be fx is equal to x. Notice there's no c value here. That is because c in this case is zero. So that means this graph intercepts the y-axis at the point zero, zero. That is a straight line that passes through the origin. Now, the second linear function is fx is equal to x plus two. If you notice, we have the same line with the same gradient. I'm going to draw it in for you. One. This also has a gradient of one. We have the same line, same gradient. The only difference is that it has moved up two positions because now the y-intercept is at point two. Okay. Moving on to a little more challenging graph. We have now the graph of fx is equal to minus 2 over 5x plus 3. Notice the gradient in this case is negative. A negative gradient denotes a slope that is descending. So this is when m is negative and the slope that is ascending will be when you have a positive value of m. Now I want to work out the actual gradient of this line. So to work out the gradient, we pick two well-spaced points that lie on the line. In this case, I'm going to th choose the point 0, 3, as well as the point 7.5, 0. Alright, so now that I have my two points, I will remember my formula 
it deals with y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let me write here my values of x and y. Since this is my first point, this would correspond to x1 and y1. And this is my second point, this would be x2 and this would be y2. So the value of the gradient is equal to y2, which is 0, minus y1, which is 3, over x2, which is, in this case, 7.5, minus x1, 0. So I have negative 3 over 7.5 which is also equal to minus 2 over 5. So we, I just confirmed that the gradient is minus 2 over 5 using the equation. All right, so I hope you understand now how to use this equation. Moving on now, we have what is called here a constant function. This is a function where you have no x value. So our equation so our equation is y is equal to mx plus c. We have no gradient. Our gradient in this case is 0. That means the our x value is also non-existent, 0. And all we are left with is our y-intercept. So as you can see, a constant function is just a straight line that passes through the point 4. On the y-axis okay now what happens when it when it input values into a constant function let's see f of 10 instead of a constant function would just be 4 f of 5 is also 4 if you want to prove you see that the value of 5 here if you draw up we see it corresponds with 4 f of let me see apple is equal for no matter what you put inside of a constant function you will get back your constant value of four so i hope that is clear to you all right next on our list would be power functions functions of the form fx is equal to x to the n where n is any real number constant. Okay, we have some examples of power functions here. fx is equal to x squared, fx is equal to x to the power of 5, fx is equal to 7. So once you raise x to any number, you have what is called a power function. The first power function on our list is fx is equal to x squared. It forms the shape of this parabola that passes through the point 0, 0. Okay? We call this a quadratic function. Now, just like before, if I add 2, my function now has shifted up two spaces. Okay? Just to verify that what we've been doing so far are functions, we can also always try the vertical line test to see that it is a function. As you can see, it only intersects the graph at one point. Therefore, this is a function. All right, the final power function that I want to talk about today is called the cubic function. As you can see, you have your function passing through the point zero, zero. In the positive x direction, you are rising infinitely. But as you can see, you have a little inflection here where you are now descending in the negative direction. All right, so you should note the general form of a cubic function. f of 1 is equal to 1 therefore this point here will be 1 1 f of negative 1 is equal to negative 1 
because negative 1 cubed is negative 1. So we have point being negative 1, negative 1 here. Alright, so just make a note of the general form of cubic functions. Okay, I think we're going to stop here for now. In the next lesson, we'll be talking about polynomial functions and we'll be continuing our list of elementary functions. Alright, thank you for watching this video. Hope to see you next time.